As the Beatles' charter plane arrived, it taxied away from the hundreds of fans waiting at the terminal to a deserted part of the runway used only by the National Guard. A mere half dozen teenagers evaded the stringent security arrangements. Concerned about their visit to the south, the Beatles could at least take comfort from the success of the tour so far. With only half their concerts over, they had already grossed over half a million dollars, and their latest single, Yellow Submarine, had sold a million. Is that your first trip south? No, no, we've been to Texas before. Uh-huh. Uh, where are you going when you leave here? Um, I'm, I'm Cincinnati. Cincinnati, that's it. Cincinnati, yeah. and yeah. how long are you going to be in the States? Uh, about... Two, two more weeks. Two more weeks? Yes. Huh? What did you have for lunch? Oh, I, did, <laughs> I didn't eat much. I didn't eat much. Anyway, I must go. It's getting boiling. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, give it two. Even the few teenagers who broke the police cordon never saw the Beatles. At the last moment, the police moved the group's transport onto the tarmac and left the heartbroken fans far behind. <laughs> the police lied. What did they lie about, honey? They thought if they'd come down there, we could see them. And you came all the way out here? Now, to, do you have a ticket for the show tonight? Yes. Well, are you going to the afternoon or evening performance? The evening. And who do you say lied to you? The police did. What did they tell you, honey? They thought if they'd come down there. And they wouldn't let you come down here? <laughs> Is that anything to cry over? <laughs> when you wait two and a half years, it is. In the two shows at the Coliseum, the Beatles hoped for an audience of 26,000. But as the fans began to arrive, it was clear that the first house was not sold out. Only days before, religious groups in the city had decided to hold a revivalist rally on the same date to demonstrate that here Christianity was no spent force. Outside the Colosseum, this small band of small demonstrators was the only sign of protest visible. At the Beatles press conference, the questioning was friendly. The young people here were fan club officials and school magazine reporters. The only man to raise the religious issue was shouted down. All the same, the Beatles had been worried about their Memphis date. In their dressing room, I talked to them about it. What difference has all this round made to this tour, do you think? Any at all? Paul? Um, I don't think it's made much difference. It's made it more hectic. It's made all the press conferences mean a bit more. People said to us, you know, last time we came, all our answers were a bit flippant. And they said, why isn't it this time? Well, the thing is, the questions are a bit more serious this time. It hasn't affected any of the bookings. The bookings have been, uh, I mean, the, the people coming to the concerts have been the same, except for the first show in Memphis which was a bit down, you know, but uh, so what? The disc jockey, Tommy Charles, who started this row off, has said that he won't play your records until you've grown up a little. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't mind if he never plays them again. You see, this is the thing, you know, everyone seems to think, that when they hear us say things like this, that we're so childish, you know, I mean, you can't say things like that unless you're a silly little child. But and if he was grown up, he wouldn't have done the thing, because he only did it for a stunt anyway. So, I mean, who is he to say about growing up? Who is he? Who is this guy? Who is Just he? Who? Apart from that, it's great. Having a swinging tour. Do you feel that Americans are out to get you, that this is all developing into something of a witch hunt? No, we thought it might be that kind of thing. I think a lot of people in England did, because there's this thing about, you know, when America gets violent, gets very hung up on a thing, it tends to have this sort of Blue Cox Clan thing around it. It seems to me you've always been successful because you've been outspoken and direct and forthright and all this sort of thing. Does it seem a bit hard to you that uh, people are now knocking you for this very thing? It does. Yes, Richard. It seems very it hard. It seems hard. It seems hard. It, you know, free speech. But is it possible just to say what you think all the time? What about 14-year-old teenagers who think you're absolutely marvellous and can't well, bear to be hurt? You see, we're, we're not, when we say anything like that, we don't say it uh, as uh, older people seem to think uh, to be offensive. We mean it, helpfully, you know, and if it's wrong what we say, okay, it's wrong and people can say, you know, you're wrong about that one. But in many cases, we believe it's right, you know, and we're quite serious about it. 
But w do you mind being asked questions, for example, in America, people keep asking you questions about Vietnam. Does this seem useful? Well, I don't know. You know, if you can say that war is not good and a few people believe you, then it may be good. I don't know. You can't say too much, though. That's the trouble. It seems a bit silly to be in America and for none of them to mention Vietnam as if nothing was happening. But why should they ask you about it? Your success is yeah, entertaining. That is why they, you know, because yeah. Americans always ask uh, yeah. showbiz people what they think about it. So do the British, you know. Showbiz, you know how it is. But, I mean, you've just got to... You can't just keep quiet about anything that's going on in the world unless you're a monk. Sorry, monks, I didn't mean it. I meant actually. <laughs> <laughs> Concerning the purpose of this rally, I thank God Jesus Christ is popular with me because he saved me 31 years ago. And everybody here tonight, he's popular with you. Say amen, huh? proved an impressive demonstration of the strength of religious feeling among the young people of Memphis. Equally, with their second show, a virtual sellout, the Beatles proved that their popularity was still unshakable. It doesn't matter about people not liking our records or not liking the way they look or what we say. You know, they're entitled to not like us. And we're entitled not to have anything to do with them if we don't want to or not to regard them. You know, we've all got our rights, you know, Harold.